As diversity is a major theme of the summit, what advice would you give to a young girl or woman trying to get into sport? So I think it's a it's a wonderful question, and I have thought about the answer to that question um, within the parameters of international event management. Um, and I've been thinking about the conversation that I would probably have with my younger self um, if I had the, the luxury or opportunity of doing that. And the first thing I would say is, is I suppose, don't worry, just enjoy the ride. Um, but in terms of, of advice for a young person coming into the business, um, I would say develop people skills. The most important attribute that I feel you can have in, in this industry and indeed in any industry is good interpersonal skills. Um, you can be the most educated and the most skilled among your peers, but unless you are personable and approachable, then I simply feel that you may not flourish. Um, and how you interact and treat people will be mirrored in how they interact and treat you in return. So developing good communication skills and developing good relationships is vital to teamwork um, and certainly vital to event management in general. And where diversity is concerned in particular, um, emotional intelligence is something that I have become very conscious of over maybe more recent years. Um, some people would say that emotional intelligence can't be learned, and I understand that. But being emotionally aware of yourself and certainly of others will make you um, a better team player and, and certainly an exceptional leader as well. Um, and lastly, I suppose one piece of advice that my mother would have um, reiterated many times when I was growing up, and she was right, and that is to listen. Listening is more important than talking, I feel. Um, in event management, listening to those with more experience than you uh, is important so you can learn from it. Um, listen to your audience and understand what they want. Um, and listen also to your stakeholders so you can know what their expectation is from your event. Um, and so you can exceed that expectation, importantly. So yeah, so people skills, emotional intelligence and listening, um, I feel are the attributes that any young person coming into the industry nowadays. Um, and I suppose one other thing that, um, that permeates is that feeling that everyone has of feeling out of their depth at some point. We all feel that, but I feel that those are really important times because generally it's within that emotion or that feeling um, that we grow most. Amazing. Thank you so much, Judith. Thank you so much. The second question that I got for you is what is your company or the industry doing to encourage diversity that you admire? So what is the best thing Cube International is doing to encourage diversity? Um, Cube employs over 50 people at the moment having grown exponentially um, in recent years across all our companies. It's made up of a very diverse team of all genders, all ages from 18 to 65 and beyond possibly. Um, we have a big international team. Our team is multicultural and, and it consists of those with disabilities and those without. And that level of diversity uh, contributes really fresh and really innovative perspectives um, in terms of how we approach projects, in terms of our brainstorming and our thinking and how we innovate and how we form partnerships with our clients. Um, and ultimately, diversity contributes a wide range of, of viewpoints, which can only and can only and do only where Cube International is concerned, enrich um, our outputs. And in terms of the, the best thing about that, the diversity of Cube, I think it's the fact that it hasn't been selected, our diversity hasn't been selected for diversity's sake. Um, it has evolved as a result of Cube's innately inclusive value set, which simply accepts people for who they are in Cube 
I feel and I have experienced that every voice is listened to and heard and every voice is welcomed and most importantly, every voice is respected. Fabulous. Thank you, Judith. And the last question that I have for you is what are you most looking forward to in 2022? So what am I most look for, looking forward to in the world of sport in 2022? Well, that's probably quite an easy answer for me. Um, obviously, there's the FIFA World Cup and there's the Commonwealth Games, which Cube um, is involved in, is uh, involved with. But the highlight for me is the e-bike Grand Prix and Sustainable Transformative Mobility Programme, of course. Um, from late 2022 into early 2023, we will be bringing the groundbreaking e-bike Grand Prix to 10 cities around the world. Um, the event and the sport is brand new and world first, and we are using uh, state-of-the-art bespoke high-speed e-bikes, which have been developed uh, by BMC in Switzerland using Formula One technology. Um, and these will be put to the test by 10 franchise teams, which consist of both men and women. Um, it's part of a worldwide championship that will be televised and broadcast all around the world. So if you're not in the city that it's being hosted, you will certainly see it or hear about it uh, via television or via digital means. Most importantly, as part of that, um, so we've been working in this concept for nearly three years now, and the most important aspect and the fundamental blueprint is our sustainability program. So all our host city partners, of which there will be 10 in year one, um, will engage in a robust sustainability program um, that individually where the cities are concerned will be a catalyst for creating greener, cleaner, healthier cities. And then together, um, as part of our cohort of 10 host cities internationally, we will be affecting real global change across that group of cities. And that is very exciting because there is power in one, but as we all know, there's power in many. And we will be creating a tangible and making a tangible difference to the carbon output across 10 cities across the world. So 2022 um, will be all about the e-bike Grand Prix for me.